Hello, my name is Jerry. This is Red Means Recording. And today I was going to give you a little brief walkthrough of some of the effects and techniques and effects and techniques that I used for the uh, telephone music performance video that came out uh, not too long ago, probably. I'm not really sure when this video is going up. But uh, Premiere is being really, really touchy with me with OBS. So we're going to show off what we did in After Effects and uh, maybe talk about Premiere a little bit. I don't know. Mostly After Effects, because that's where most of the magic happens. After I made the main edit in Premiere, the first main edit, sort of the preliminary edit, I made a uh, proxy export, a little H.264 export, and exported it here. You can see there's some footage that didn't make it in. I brought it in here so I could then lay stuff over it and uh, export that back to Premiere. So let's go through it step by step. The first thing is this intro. This is text layer, which is right here this guy. We'll go ahead and paste that in here. Looks something like that. It was a font. It's a good font. The font is... Someone's going to ask, so I'll tell you. It's called Code Light. Code Light. Probably from defont.com. And uh, what I did was uh, I went to Layer. Wait. Yes. Layer. Auto Trace. And you get this little dialogue here and you can mess around with it a bit. Um, if your preview's on, you'll see the settings. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna trace the frame that I'm on and it's gonna create things that I can then play with a bit more. In this case, masks that I can then add a stroke to. So if you hit okay here, it will create what we have underneath that, the auto traced layer. So let's turn that back on. And you can see that we got this kind of cool little animation thing going on here. Now, the reason that there's two levels to it as opposed to just that one uh, stroke that we saw in the original text is because of the way the auto trace works. It traced the outside of it and created that thing. And I actually kind of like it. See this little, this little space in between the letters there. It's kind of cool. All right, so once you've auto traced something like that, um, you can go in and apply a stroke effect to it. And that's just a standard effect in After Effects. Go search for stroke, drop it on there. And then you can mess with, let's go ahead and pull up our keyframes. Boop. You can mess with um, the uh, stroke start and end. And you can see I've got some keyframes, one keyframe here for the start and end of the stroke. And uh, if you don't have all masks here turned on, it won't really work. You want to stroke all the masks, you want to affect all the masks that the auto trace created. So make sure you have all masks on. And then um, you can play with this start and end point right here. And you see it'll draw that stroke on, it'll draw the letters on. So that's what's creating that pretty cool effect. And then in Premiere, I added a bunch of uh, Starglow, which is a magic bullet plugin. Oh, I'm sorry, it's trap code. Sorry, magic bullet, it's trap code. Uh, and it is a cool glow effect that uh, does pretty much what it says. It uh, adds a really cool pointed glow to things that you can uh, mess around with a bit more different settings. I use this throughout on the waveforms um, to get different effects. And of course you can automate streak length and you can make it all super crazy if you want to. Starglow is a really cool way to add a very specific look to your things. It's not for everything, but it definitely can do some cool stuff. So there's Starglow on almost everything throughout uh, once it was brought into Premiere. And I think that's probably part of the reason that Premiere is so unhappy with me right now is because it's like, you know what? You're trying to record on OBS. I've got a, st a ton of stuff going on here. I just don't want to deal with it. I don't, I don't want it do it. But After Effects is happy so far. All right. So that's the intro. Um, there uh, are four performances that were recorded. We have uh, two instances of the Access Indigo Virus 2. Access Indigo 2 Virus 2. And then two instances of the Innovation Base Station that were recorded live. And uh, the waveforms, I wanted to appear sort of as like little uh, eight HUD interfaces, like heads up display interfaces on top of each shot. So I found a place uh, in the proxy video here that I brought into After Effects, and I started messing around with adding uh, a waveform for each. So let's go into the pre-comp for that and see what's going on. All right. So... Uh, I pre-comp these because it was a lot easier to export them individually. A pre-comp is when you take a bunch of things that you have going on in After Effects and you put them all into a comp. So this, this comp right here is all this stuff right here. Um, in After Effects, there is a default thing called audio spectrum. There's also audio waveform. It's an effect. 
And if you just search for audio, you'll find it right here. Uh, that's what I dropped on here. And if you have audio, you can select your audio in here. So each of the stems that I recorded, each stem, uh, each track, so we have four different synths here, each one, I exported those stems individually from Ableton and brought them into After Effects so that I could have each one of these waveforms be what that synth was actually playing at the time. Uh, so each, each little piece of audio down here in each one of these pre-comps is the individual synthesizer's um, uh, audio output. Try to give it a, a little bit of originality per thing. Uh, so you want to create a, uh, a, a, just a regular solid by going up to Layer New Solid. And it doesn't matter what color it is because when you drop the audio spectrum thing on it, it disappears. Like that. But we already did that. So there's our waveform right there. We pointed it at the audio file. We messed around with uh, the height to get how high we want it to be within that space. We messed around with the frequency response. You can set the low frequency and high frequency of the waveform's response. So we're going from 100 hertz to 1,000 hertz. Uh, that can help you zero in on, uh, look if, I, if I push this up too high, see, we're not really getting much anymore. We're at 3,200 hertz right now. We're going to drop down to 800. You can see that we're getting a more filled out uh, section here because we constrained the frequency range of the audio spectrum plugin. Maximum frequency bands is going to give you a finer grain output, more bands to, to show on screen at once. Um, and then we already did the height. Uh, duration, the lower the duration, the faster the response. So... Uh, if I turn my resolution down a bit, um, we'll see a little bit. So we're, see how it's kind of responsive now? Like it's it's snapping in and out to uh, the audio pretty well. If I was to turn this down even more, let's say to, it looks really different. And if I go up really high, it's going to look more like an actual, uh, like a, a waveform. It's not really responding how I would thought it would, but... These are all settings you can mess with. Audio offset, I don't really mess with that much. Thickness, I don't know why it's not spelled the appropriate way. And then softness to uh, make it a little bit more feathered if you want, but we're not messing with that. I usually keep my um, my waveforms not very soft. I like them, I like them harder and more distinct. So after that, um, we, let me just go back so we can remember what the heck we're actually even looking at here. Okay, there. So drop a marker. So you can see that it's kind of like set in space along the line of the virus. Um, that was done by after I'd created the waveform, I and and the background, which we'll get into in a second. I uh, I made a null. A null is a nothing object. It's a, just a random thing in After Effects that you can uh, create by going to a layer new null. And uh, the thing about nulls is, in this context, is they're useful if you parent things to them. So that's what we've done over here. The things we wanted to move around in this space, we've parented them together to this null. So that now this null controls where both of those objects are, as opposed to just uh, having to uh, reposition these individually. So that's super, super useful. You can use nulls to do a lot of things in that respect. So we, uh, we made everything 3D, because we knew that we wanted to kind of have this 3D look. There's like, you know, there's a... A depth to it. There's a bit of um, pitch and yaw to it too, meaning that it's like sort of standing up in 3D space. And uh, to do that, we made all of our layers 3D and then we made our null 3D. And then we used uh, 3D rotation here to mess around with where it sat in 3D space. We try to align it with the way that the virus was sitting in the frame. Uh, there's two more things we did for each one. Um, the first thing is we added a background. So the shape layer behind it was to sort of give the uh, the heads up display kind of look thing a little bit more gravity, um, kind of like this tr semi-transparent uh, little LCD screen thing going behind it, which incidentally is almost the same color as the virus screen. And that's the shape layer. It was parented to the null as well. So when I move around this uh, this null, everything moves with it. It's a little it's a little package deal, um, and it's semi-transparent. 23% opacity. And then finally, for the finishing touch, I added a Venetian blinds effect, which can be used to sort of simulate a screen sometime. If we zoom in here a bit, you can see that there's lines. So we'll follow here. That's the Venetian blinds effect. So uh, 
without it, it's just a solid. But um, the Venetian blinds, in fact, actually can be used as a transition. You can let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. There we go. All right. So uh, you can set the um, the angle of the blinds wherever you want. You can do whatever you want. Look at that. Um, you can make them super wide, and you can do things like make them softer. And finally, uh, the transition complete is sort of like how open or close the blinds are. So that's how we achieved that sort of LCD look right there. So after we sort of got, after we got our whole thing like positioned in space and we were happy with how it looked, we pre-comped it, which you can do by uh, right clicking on your layers and choosing pre-compose or um, the appropriate shortcut on your system. Um, on a PC, it's I think control shift slash or something like that. I had messed around with adding like a TV effect in here, um, but I just thought it was too much. Um, and in the end, when we brought it into uh, Premiere, we added, um, I think I added a, a little a little star glow on it and some other effects throughout, depending on what the situation was. So yeah, so here's the second virus. You can see how it sort of sat in 3D space here and works like a HUD, like a heads up display showing the waveform of the instrument. And then base station, there we go. So again, same deal. We got Venetian blinds on the on the solid in the background. We have our nulls that we parented our things to so that we can move them all around in 3D space together. Um, and I did do one more thing for all of these. Um, this, this shape layer back here that we have, which is basically just a rectangle that we applied the Venetian blinds to. Um, I, I found that with this audio spectrum thing, I wanted um, the height sometimes to be higher than the constraints of this box, uh, of, of its background, and it wouldn't do if the waveform like like went over outside of it. So I duplicated the shape layer, this, this box that we used as sort of the heads up display screen, and I brought it on top of our uh, waveform, and I used it as a track mat. And what that means is that if you go over here and select track mat. Whatever's happening above this layer will affect the the alpha or the transparency or the visibility of, of the thing below it. So in this case, this this bounding box here is complete. Anything that goes outside of it, like here, I'll just increase the height until it goes out. It will like clip it. It will constrain it. You won't see anything past it. If I was to turn this track mat off, you would see that it goes past it. But with the track mat on, with this rectangle constraining that that uh, that space, um, it stays nicely in the box and looks more like what I wanted it to. Let's see what else is there. Oh yeah, there's this guy. I forgot about this. Okay, so the cool thing about the audio spectrum effect is that um, you can uh, make it follow a path. Uh, and that can be any shape you want because in After Effects you can use a pen tool to draw any shape you want or you can uh, use a shape layer to draw an ellipse or, you know, star, whatever. Any shape, any shape you can dream, you can, uh, you can do. So what we did was uh, we created a couple layers of audio spectrum. And uh, these ones are keyed off of the um, the full mix, so not stems like the other ones were. This is the full mix. This is this is the uh, final export. So we're getting all the beats, all that stuff. It's reacting that way. And uh, what we have here, there should be a mask on here. So once you created the audio spectrum effect, can I maybe I can just do this? All right. So that's what the audio spectrum effect looks like without the mask. This uh, this guy right here, um, which is not dissimilar to what we saw over here. It's this. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's not dissimilar to what we saw here. It's a straight line that shows off the audio spectrum. This one happens to be rotating. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but when you when you draw a mask on here, and we'll just show you with a uh, with this crazy crazy guy right here. All right, so I just drew a star shaped mask on here. Now, if I go up in the audio spectrum effects thing to path, I can choose that mask, and now you see that our audio spectrum is following the path of that star. So uh, I did not use a star. I did not want a star. I used a circle. So we have two audio spectrum effects here in following a circle path that's, that's been created by using a mask on that layer. We have one in blue, we have one in white, and they're opposite each other. And uh, they are being set to rotate 
you can see that over here, we've parented them to a null, like we talked about before. So I wanted to affect a bunch of things at once. So we parented them all to this null. And we went in and we have an expression on our rotation here to uh, just slowly rotate this over time. So um, by clicking uh, Alt in, uh, in Windows on one of these little keyframe things here, you can open up your expressions here. And expressions are crazy, and I'm never going to probably talk about them because I don't know hardly anything about them. But uh, this is where After Effects uh, and, and math and programming start coming together. And uh, my golly, you can, do, you can do stuff. So all we did was a simple um, uh, time times two. And um, on things that have an endless uh, ability to uh, be modulated, like a rotation, because you know this can just go around and around forever, something like the time of, uh, expression is just going to keep it moving forever. And you don't have to keyframe it. It just does it. Um, so yeah, that's that middle waveform thing that we have uh, sort of in the beginning and throughout. And in Premiere, I did add a lot of effects to it or and shrunk it down and changed the way that it looked. Um, you know, sometimes it has star glow on it. Sometimes I've inverted it. Um, like the star glow effect on it's actually pretty cool. So uh, yeah, look at that. That's, that's pretty cool. My computer hates it though. Um, and quarter resolution hates it too. What a surprise. Anyways, this would look really, really cool if you could see it right now. But uh, Starglow is, Star is awesome. Boost the light up a bit. Yeah, look at that. That's super cool. Anyways, after I created these waveforms, I exported each one of them um, individually uh, with an alpha channel um, from, from After Effects. And I brought them in all together in Premiere. And I layered them on top where I needed them to be. Anything else I can talk to you about? Uh, you know, I did actually record some other stuff that maybe I can show off in here. Okay, so the other thing I want to show you is uh, something that people were asking directly about, and I think I poorly answered when we were talking on YouTube in the comments, is um, how I got some of the other waveform things, like the crazy scrolling waveforms that were happening. And uh, I, I really love interface. I love uh, UI. I love things that respond to uh, other things and you know, matching up visuals with audio. And so when I see something that looks cool, I, uh, I'll just use it. I don't, I don't really care where it comes from. So in this case, um, I knew I wanted some interface stuff and I knew that I had a really good plugin to play with that. And that is Isotopes Insight, which is a uh, metering plugin. Um, it allows you to see things like loudness and, and the spectral curve of your material. I opened up Ableton, um, which you can see here's the track in the background here. And I opened up uh, uh, Insight and I ran it over the, the whole bus, whole master bus, then captured it with OBS in real time. And then I brought it into Premiere and I picked sections of it that I really, really liked and I scaled them up to get rid of all that stuff. I scaled them up like that. There we go. And sometimes even zoomed even, even more over here. You know, it doesn't really matter. Whatever, whatever works. So yeah, look at all these. Look at all this cool interface stuff that you can grab that moves with your sound. You know, like that does things with your sound. Um, it just looks so cool. Like I, I don't even know how I'd make that in After Effects, but you don't have to because someone already made it for you, and you just have to grab it. So this is, uh, I think, pretty close to something that was in the scene, um, and then I applied Star Glow on top and adjusted to taste. Um, and that's really it. So uh, yeah, that's that's telephone. A lot of waveforms put in different places with glow effects on them. Look at that, it looks so good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is what this is what art looks like. Anyways, friends, thanks for taking time to hang out with me and talk about waveforms. I hope that you are having a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.